welcome good afternoon and good afternoon and good afternoon welcome to i am my sister's keeper i am your host miss terry penny how are you guys doing how are you guys doing y'all it is so pretty outside it is so pretty outside y'all i wanted to go outside today but I realize, y'all, that if I go outside today, I, it's just going to be one little problem. I have to walk up and down a lot of stairs with all of this stuff. And it, that, that's a lot of stuff. So I, I, I'm going to set up. I'm going to try to... Sunday, if everything permits, if, if, if you know, everything goes and it's still pretty... And Sunday and sunny <laughs> outside. I'm gonna try to set up earlier and go outside. Y'all, it is too pretty. It is. The sun is just first and foremost. I, I welcome. I hope you guys woke up in good spirit and in your right frame of mind. I hope that God has blessed you all with a good night's sleep. I hope that you guys woke up refreshed and rejuvenated and alive and well. I hope that you guys have had a blessed day so far. I know I have. I don't know about y'all, but I know I have. Um, yesterday, I had my little pudding pop. As y'all saw her picture, she is the cutest little five-month-old bundle of joy that you have ever wanted to see. And she is just so cute, y'all. She is so cute. Um, and I had her yesterday. Well, actually, I have been watching her. So I will have her again Monday, but... Um, my niece here will be watching her while I live stream. So my niece here will be watching her while I live stream. But she is so cute and I love having her and she was just a bundle of joy, y'all. I had so much fun with her. She is just so active and Y'all know my kids are grown men now. They they well up in their thirties, and to just to have a five month old again, it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, she. If you were, if you was a parent and your children have grown and moved out the house and have their own family now, and you know you're an empty nester, to have a newborn, if it's just for a day, to take care of, cherish that, cherish that, because. That is a special feeling that uh, you'll never forget. Because it, it brings you, it takes you back to when you had your kids. You know, and you was changing the diapers and playing with their little fat cheeks and, you know, doing the baby talk and all that stuff. And it is. <laughs> Yeah, she's a uh, she'll grow. She, she you'll fall in love with her. You'll fall in love love with her to the point where you are spoiler. Yeah, but uh, she's with her godparents this weekend, so I don't have her today. But you know, I like I said, I have a Monday, so I'm good. I'm good, but. Like I say, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this beautiful day. Uh, the sun is shining brightly. 
Y'all, the, the sky is even bluer than before. I have been looking out my windows all day. All day. Um, today, we're going to start on part three of the study guide, which we left off um, weeping over the sad condition of the world. We are in Revelation chapter 5. And um, Revelation chapter 5 is the scroll with the seven seals. The scroll with the seven seals. Excuse me one second, y'all. Gotta take this. Take these vitamins. I kid y'all not. I think I take every vitamin that's on the shelf. I take calcium, vitamin C, D3, B13, um, biotin, magnesium. Iron. I, I take a multivitamin. And then on top of that, I have to take Topamax. Two more and then I'm finished. like to get trapped. So I hope y'all been getting out and enjoying this weather. Because it's it's spring. It's springtime. It's springtime. It's time to get in the parks with the kids. Summertime coming up. Summer camp is coming up. Um, uh, again, the Salvation Army summer camps are now getting ready to start. Um, there is a Salvation Army. near you uh all you have to do is go to the website or go into the salvation army um ask them about their summer camp program they will be more than happy to give you all the information that you need if you happen to live here in milwaukee and you watch the bible study live stream I will be at the park tomorrow, right here on 56 and Sherman. It's the park right here on right in Sherman and 56 in Sherman. And I will be handing out information and little gifts for the kids. 
and is have the packet in there for them to go to camp. So you can stop by there. I will also be putting out posters, letting you also know that I'll be also putting out information about the camp there. So, it's a Saturday, so the kids usually, I'll, I'll probably start, be, I'll probably be there for 11, because the kids usually get there like early, so I'll probably be there for like 11, and, well, I'll probably be there for 10 to set up and start doing stuff at 11, yeah, so, It's a good camp. They have all kinds of activities that these kids can do. So that way they'll have something and somewhere to go for the summer. Alrighty. Oh, that was the last one. All right. So, Weeping over the sad condition of the world is our topic today. Dealing with the scroll and the seven seals. Let us go into prayer. And invite the Father and His Son and the Holy Spirit down to join us. And invite our teacher down. And then we can get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you and stand before your throne. Father, with a humble heart and a bowed head, we ask that you come and join us as we get ready to study your words, to dig deeper into your verses. Father, we ask that you open up our minds, our hearts, our ears, and our eyes so that we can receive your knowledge, your wisdom, and understanding. So that we can receive the message that you have for us today. So that our eyes will be open to see what it is that you want us to see. So that our ears can hear your voice over every other voice. Jesus, we ask that you come down and teach us what it is that you want us to know. Teach us what it is that we should be doing 
in order to enter your kingdom. Teach us what we should know in order to prepare for what's to come. Teach us understanding of this message so that we can go out and teach others so that they will be prepared and ready for what's to come. Holy Spirit, we ask that you come forward. Take over the microphones and the cameras. So everyone that pushes play that listens to the sound of the voice of the teacher. That you open up their ears, that you open up their eyes, their hearts, their minds, so that they may receive his message. That they may have wisdom and gain understanding that they may see through the eyes of Jesus what John saw. And that this message may prepare them for what's to come. That it may encourage them to go and share with others. Holy Spirit, I ask that you wash me clean in the inside. Wash any iniquities or transgression that I may have done. So when the Son of God steps in to teach this class, there is nothing to hinder him from doing that. I ask to be hidden behind the cross. Don't let them see me. But let them see you, Jesus, that lives within me. Don't let them hear my voice. For my words cannot save them. For my words cannot give them salvation. But only you, Jesus, who lives through me, who teaches through me, who works through me, only you can save them and give them salvation. I'm just a messenger, a willing and able body who will do whatever you ask of them. Thank you. Again, for this opportunity to be used by you to do your will. To bring your message to your children who are willing to listen.
to bring your gospel to the world and to all those who are in it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For the glory and armor and power belongs to you. This is your domain your dominion. This is your birthright. You are king of the earth and king of the heavens and all in between. Thank you, Jesus. Take over, Jesus. Let everything that is not pleasing and acceptable to you be cast out into the lake of fire to never be seen again. In your Holy Son, Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right. Thank you, Father. Weeping over the sad conditions of the world. Revelations 5, 4. It says, And I weep much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Again, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book. Neither to look thereon. It says, John wept. Over the sad condition of the earth and world. For the way it existed then and now. And what was about to come over it. It is under Satan's control. As the God of this world. It's fallen state. Listen to that again. John, who lived way before our time, wept over the state of the world. Because it had fallen into the hands of Satan.
and what was about to happen in our time. The judgment that was about to come upon this world. He proposed his purpose was to get him to bypass the cross on Calvary Hill. Jesus purchased back the title deed to this world. When Satan was tempting Jesus, he was trying to do the same thing that he did to Eve. But Jesus was not like Eve. So Jesus did not fall for his manipulations, his trickery. Each time Satan came at Jesus, Jesus had a scripture to say. In fact, let's go Chapter 4 of Matthew. I mean the King James Version Bible. Matthew. Well, hey, Tiff. All right, big brother. I'll catch you later. Okay, chapter 4 of Matthew. This is the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. Now, if you would like to follow along with me in your Bibles. Then I will wait until you get your Bibles. And you can turn to chapter 4 in Matthew. Type in the comment box. Okay, you're ready. And then I will read. I will hold and wait. For four minutes. And then I'm going to start reading. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 4 in the King James Version Bible. If you want to read along with me, you can turn into your Bibles, Matthew chapter 4. If you have it, say okay in the... Comment box and I will begin to read. Got about 
two more minutes, minute and a half, and I'm going to start. I'm going to read the first, and then I'm going to read the commentary. Because my Bible has the verses and the breakdown of the verses. Okay, it says, The temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. Then, was Jesus led up of the Spirit? into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Then Jesus, then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The commentary for verse 1 says, immediately after the descent of of the Holy Spirit upon him, he was urgently led by the Holy Spirit, probably close to Jericho, was the wilderness. Tempted of the devil, as the last Adam, he would be tempted in all points, like as we are. Like as we are. Satan tempts us every day that we walk this earth. He tempts us at work. He tempts he tempt us when, when we're not even working. He tempts us to do things that we should not do. They tempt us to say things that we should not say. He put thoughts in our heads that are unclean and unpure and unrighteous. He uses these things to distract us from the cross, from studying God's words, from doing what is right, and to take our focus off the kingdom and off of Christ. He uses the worldly things to distract us and take us off the narrow path of righteousness. He uses the same worldly things that causes us to put our cross down and walk away from Christ. He uses those same things to neglect our marriage, our children. He uses those things that causes us to sell our souls and our lives to him. Listen to the commentary read with the verse. Then, immediately after the descent of the Holy Spirit was upon him, was Jesus led Urgently led 
of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, into the wilderness, probably close to Jericho, to be tempted of the devil as the last Adam. He would be tempted in all points like as we are. Now, y'all know that if I find reference verses, I'm going to add them. So, they have reference verses that I'm going to add. Now, some of these, if I already have them, I won't do it twice. Verse 2 says, And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. Commentary. Other than Christ, three men in the Bible fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Moses, Deuteronomy 9.9, 18 and 25 and 10, 10. Joshua, Exodus 24, 13 through 18, 32, 15 through 17, and Elijah, 1 King 19, 7 through 8. These were the only three men in the Bible that has ever fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. I'm just writing this down. Because I want to make sure y'all have all of this. Verse 3, and when the tempter, and when the tempter, Satan, came to, came to him, he said, if you be the son of God, since you are the son of God, command that those, that these stones be made bread. Christ was tempted to use his power for his own benefit, which he was to never do. I'm going to read three again. And when the tempter, Satan, came to him, he said, if you be the son of God, Command that these stones be made bread. The commentary said, Since you are the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. 
Christ was tempted to use his power for his own benefit, which he was to never do. Satan was saying, well, if you're the son of God, turn these rocks into bread. In other words, prove that you're the son of God. Show me that you're the son of God. Everybody's saying that you can do this. You Show me. Show me. But see, Christ would never have to prove who he is. We, as his children, we don't have to prove ourselves to anyone. We don't have to argue back and forth who we are. Our works shows who we are. The way we treat people shows who we are. The way we love on each other shows who we are. The way we carry ourselves shows who we are. The way we talk to each other shows who we are. The way we help each other, support each other, uplift each other. When we walk with Christ, his presence goes before us. So the, we don't have to Walk with our chest stuck out and brag and boast. Yeah, I'm a child of God. I'm a churchgoer. I'm a this. No, we don't have to do. No, we don't have to advertise. That's what folks fail to realize. That's what some church folks fail to realize. You don't have to brag and boast about who you are, sweetheart. If you are truly a child of the living God. Your actions speaks for you. Because there's always somebody watching you. There's always somebody looking. It's the way you carry yourself. It's the way that you when God uses you to do his will, to do his bidding in the world, when he uses you to reach out to his children that are walking in the darkness, there's a light. There's a beautiful, bright, warm light that he puts in you, his spirit, that shines so brightly in you that it, it casts out a light through you that it just brightens up the darkness. And it's when you walk in a, it's like you can walk in a room that's full of sinners. And that room will get quiet. It's like that light has cast an overshadow, uh, 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 uh it, it has. What's the word I'm looking for, Father? What's the word I'm looking for? It, it, it's like somebody has cut the light switch on. And you can see everything that's going on. You have exposed what the demons are doing. And 
Now they scared. They didn't got quiet. Because they know that a child of God, that Jesus has entered into the room. See, now they worry. Because they don't know if they're going to be cast out. They don't know what's going to happen. But when you walk in that room. They're going to try everything in their power. To get you to come to their side. So they're going to come up and tempt you with everything they got. But see, what they, what they fail to realize is that Jesus was God. And God was Jesus. Jesus knew who Satan was. Jesus knew who Satan was when he was in heaven. He knew him by Lucifer. Lucifer knew who Jesus was. But yet, because he was in the flesh, Lucifer or Satan was trying to get that flesh to react. Trying to tempt him to do things in the flesh. Because see, once he get that flesh to react, He had he won't bypass that cross. Because see, if he got that flesh to react, then he could have got in his head and said, What you dying for these people for? These people don't deserve for you to get on that cross and die. Why would you do that? If you come down here. And worship me. I can give you all these earthly kingdoms. You can be a king over everything down here. See he was trying to turn. God against himself. How can you. How can that. How can you do that. How can you do that. Yes. It's three separate beings. I understand that it was Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and then God the Father. Three different beings, but it was one God. They all was a part of each other. They were all equal. They were one. So, how can you get God to turn against himself? I mean, has, has anybody ever looked at it that way? I'm just saying. Cause let's listen to it again. He said, if you be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Christ was tempted to use his power for his own benefit, which he was to never do. God never used his power to benefit himself. God always used his power to help us. Or help others. And Jesus is a part of God. God is a part of Jesus. And they are one. So. I mean. If somebody else has a. A, 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 a thought on this. I mean hey. We got the comment box. This is why we have in Bible study. I want to hear other people input on this. But Satan. Just like the Pharisees. 
And Sadducees told God, Jesus that he was full of the devils. So how is Satan trying to cast out his own demons out of... How, you see what I'm saying? How does that work? If you have your minions working in people, why would you cast your own minions out of people that you're trying to take over? So why would... <laughs> hey, sis. <laughs> okay. So let's move on to so let's move on to four because y'all 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 okay. This this is how my father has me thinking. This is. Where he takes me when he take me into studying. He take it in. He breaks down each little syllable. Each little. He, he just. And I, I just see the Bible in a whole different way. I just. Because it don't make no sense. How, how, okay. Verse 4 says. But he answered and said. It is written. Man shall not, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Listen to that again. But he answered and said, it is written. It is written. Oh, let me show you the right. Let me show you the right. I showed you a piece of paper. Here it is. It is written. Did you see it? It is written that no man shall live by bread alone, but by, by the words that come out of the mouth of God. Now, Jesus was teaching and ministering. The word of God. Was he not? So why? Why would he bow down? To someone who hated him. See I, I don't. This is the thing. I don't know when Satan came when when Satan was kicked out of heaven did he fall and hit his head I mean did he did he hit a rock I mean I mean when he fell did he hit the side of the mountain and and get amnesia I mean what really happened because you mean to tell me that you don't realize that the man that you trying to tempt It is preaching about a kingdom that he helped create. He, he told his disciples that he was leaving to go make a place for them. Okay, listen to the commentary. Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Man is a spiritual being as well as a physical being. Therefore, dependent on God. This was made of dirt. Dirt, folks. Dirt, yes. God took dirt, put it together, shaped it, formed it, clayed it together, sculpted out the fingers, the hands, the toes, the whole nine yards. 
but it was the breath of life when he blew into the nostrils of that dirt is when it came to life. When he blew the spirit, he blew, come on y'all, come on, yeah, I mean, Dirt, if I go out there right now and make a dirt figure of a human form and just say, get up. Come on. We finna go to the store and we finna go get some um, chicken tenders and some french fries and we gonna cook that tonight for dinner. That thing, it, it, it's just gonna get up and move? It's just gonna get up and move. Just because I said, come on, get up and move. Come on, let's go. Really? Really? Y'all, 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 no, no. My neighbor's going to look at me like something is seriously wrong with me. They're going to call the people with the white coats to come and get me. Because I'm out there talking to dirt. But if I sit there, knowing who my God is, knowing what my God can do with faith the size of a mustard seed, knowing that when he died on the cross, the powers that he inherited, I inherited too. And if I ask for that dirt to be given life and ask for it in Jesus' name, knowing that he can do it, knowing that he hears my heart desires, knowing and he knows that I'm a faithful servant. He knows that I would do any and everything that he, and he knows everything about his daughter. And he grants that to me. And he tells me, daughter, prophesize over that dirt and tell it to rise. And I say dirt in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rise up out of that ground. And that sucker gets up and start to move Come on now. Come on now. Then I'm going to say, come on, let's get in the car. Let's go to the store because we're getting some chicken nuggets and french fries and we finna celebrate. That's the power of God. We cannot do that in the flesh, folks. We can't. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. We can't live without God. We can't breathe without God. We can't open our eyes without God. Do y'all understand that? It is by the grace of God that we open our eyes every day. It is by the grace of God that we can walk, talk, smell, do whatever it is that we do. Our motor skills come from God. But some of us fail to realize that. Okay, y'all don't hear me though. But that's all right. That's all right. Because you will hear him. I promise you that. Verse 5 says. Then the devil took him up. Into the holy city. And set him on a pinnacle of the temple. The commentary for verse 5. Then the devil took him up. A powerful force. Into the holy city, Jerusalem, 
and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, its highest point, which Josephus stated was about 700 feet from the ravine below. 700 feet from the ravine below. The pinnacle of a temple. And in verse 6, he said, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest any at any time you dash your foot against the stone. Listen to that again. And said unto him, if you be, he keeps saying, if you be the son of God, cast yourself down, throw yourself down, jump off. <laughs> I don't care. Pretend you're flying. Just jump. Do something. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge. He going to tell the, uh, his angels to come get you. You already know this. He going to send somebody down to catch you. You know you ain't going to fall and hurt yourself. You know he ain't going to let you do it. So just go on and jump. I just want to see, is he going to send somebody? I just want to see, is you real? You know, is you <laughs> are you fake? I mean, are you claiming to be the son of God? I, I, I just want to see. I mean. Hey, you know, prove who you are. I mean, come on, you know. And in their hands, they shall bear you up, least at any time you dash your foot against the stone. Commentary. And say unto him, if you be the son of God, since you are the son of God, cast yourself down. Literally spoken. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, least at any time you dash your foot against the stone. Derives from Psalms 91, 11 and 12. Let me write that down. Psalms 91, 11, and 12. Okay, so guess what? Let's take a road trip to Psalms 91. And I'm going to read that right quick. Psalms. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Oh, look at that. Psalms 91, 11 through 12. All right, here it is. I need a red pen. Psalms 91. 11 through 12 says, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. The commentary for verse 11 says, This shows how much Satan knows the Bible. Okay, listen to that again. This shows how much Satan knows the Bible, but yet he still thinks he can circumvent the word of God. Angels did constantly help Christ. Matt, oh, y'all got, come on now. Look at all these reference verses. However, Satan corrupted the scriptures by omitting in all 
your ways and inserting in places at any time. The Messiah's path through the desert of the wilderness was one of the dependence upon God. Satan's effort in the temptation was to move him to independence. But he failed. Of course he did. Of course he did. Christ walked a path of perfect submission, obedience, and dependence. Likewise, all those who walk after him in like dependence and faith can be assured of his victory. Y'all, let me read that to y'all one more time because I think every we all need to hear that again. All the saints need to hear that again. Listen. And I'm going to just only read that part. Satan's effort and the temptation was to move him to independence. But he failed. Christ walked a path of perfect submission, obedience, and dependence. Likewise, all those who walk after him in like dependence and faith can be assured of his victory. Do you see the difference in those who walk with Christ and those who walk in the world? See, if you're living in the world, if you go by man's laws, man's doctrine, you're depending on man to take care of you. You're depending on man's approval. You're depending on on man to say it's okay it's all right you can do this you can do that you can have this you can't have that you can say this you can't say that but when you walk with Christ you walk in dependence because you know without a shot, you ain't even got to worry about it. You ain't got to stress over it. You ain't got to struggle. You ain't got to go through none of that. Because you already know who taking care of you. You already know who taking care of you. So you ain't got to worry about where your money coming from to pay your bills. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to stay, what car you're going to drive. You ain't got to worry about none of that. All you got to do is have faith and trust in God and his words. Your focus on the cross, your victories already won. Come, Come on. Come on, saints. Because if you a real saint, a real child of God, you should be stomping, clapping, running around your house, shouting hallelujah, amen, all across the board. You should know this. Satan ain't got nothing on you. Satan can't touch you. He can't get man. Come. Satan can sit up here and, 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 and you can be woo. Satan can throw the kitchen sink at you and Jesus Christ will take that kitchen sink and put it in some place and put a, 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 a put lilies in there to grow and you'll have a whole flower bed. Don't play with my God. Don't play with my God. I don't depend on this world for nothing. 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 Stress, not. Worry, not. For what? For what? Baby, I'm the daughter of a king. My, my, my brother, 
defeated hell, went and took the keys from Satan. He holds the keys to hell and heaven. What? I, I, I already told y'all. I got two Labradoodle dogs, a chocolate and a caramel in my house, in my mansion, in heaven waiting on me. Matthew. One of the disciples is feeding them right now, letting them run around in the backyard. I got an 18-bedroom mansion with a shelf kitchen. My backyard has a waterfall. I have enough acres to grow enough food to where I can feed everybody. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I fear no one. No one. Did y'all... Listen to that. Satan's effort in the temptation was to move him to independence. To depend on him. To worship him. And he failed. He failed. He F A I L E D. He failed. So, if we picked up our cross, and we're walking the path that Christ walked. And, and, and we're doing the things that Christ asks us to do. That means there's no fear in us. That means whatever the world and Satan, our families, our jobs, our situations... Our wives, our husbands bring at us, our kids, whatever the case may be, tries to throw at us, to break us, to tear us down, to make us feel like this. What we do? And we give it to who? And then we let it what? And then we do what? <laughs> yeah. Because we are what? The children of the who? All right. Y'all better stop playing. Verse 12 says, they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Commentary for 12 says, Satan attempted to get Christ to commit the sin of presumption, which means to twist the word of God in order that it means something that God did not intend. He tried to get Christ to test God. Well, if God said he going to do this, then I want to see him do it. Well, God said he was going to do this, but I ain't see him do it yet. How many of us say that? How many of us say that? Well, God said he was going to take care if I pay my tithes and do this, then he was going to take care of my bills and he was going to do all this and he was going to do all that, but I don't see none of this happen. Okay, well, sweetheart, you may have paid your tithes, but how many of you out there actually got there and worked? How many of you have actually got out there and did works? See, because what you fail to realize is works without faith. Is dead. 
If you doing something to get something out of it, and you ain't doing nothing else, if you ain't, if you sitting up there paying your tithes just cause you want to get your bills paid, but yet you still ain't helping your neighbors who sitting up there don't have food, don't have a way to work. You have old school uniforms that your child don't wear no more and they children, they can't afford uniforms for their kids. But instead of you giving them the uniforms that your child can't wear no more, you sit them on the side of the road for the trash to pick up. You don't invite them to dinner knowing they don't have food. And you only paid your tithes one time. You ain't never stepped foot in a church to worship. You never did any community work. Mm, mm, mm. I got to be talking to somebody. So, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. You always want God to do, 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 do. Prove this, prove that. But what do you do? What, what what do you do? See, this is... Let, let me get in close to y'all. Let me get close to you so y'all can see my face. Listen up, kitties. God don't have to do nothing. Nothing. He don't owe you nothing. He don't have to do nothing. He choose to do it because he loves you. He don't have to do nothing. Because for one thing, we are a bunch of ungrateful, unsatisfied, a bunch of selfish people. You don't want to go to church and praise him. You don't want to praise him when you get up in the morning. You don't want to read his Bible. I mean, you don't want to study his words. You don't want to worship him. You don't want to, you don't want to do anything that gives him the honor, praise, and the glory. But you want to sit here and open up your mouth and flap, 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 complain, 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 whine, whine, whine. Because he don't do nothing. But you still alive. Your eyes still open up to whine, 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 and complain, plain, plain. Mm. Y'all making me thirsty. That was Psalms 91, verses 11 and 12. And I got some reference verses out of here that I'm going to also add into the comment box that you guys... Can go look at. Which. Now we're going back to. Rep. Uh. Oh, I think I passed it. Oh, here we go. So, now, verse 7 says, Jesus said unto him, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm back in Matthew. I'm back in Matthew. Jesus said, verse 7, Jesus said unto him, it was written again, you said not Tempt the Lord your God.
Commentary, Deuteronomy 6, 16. To tempt God is to question his words. To tempt God is to question his word. Which casts doubt on his ability to do what he promised. So what you doing? Did you call him? You doubting God? You doubting what he says? Are you calling this man a liar? Are you saying that what he said is not true? That's why a lot of false prophets, prophets, preachers, teachers. Remember, he said in the last days, a lot of false teachers will come out of the woodworks. A lot of false preachers will come out of a, a lot of a lot of people who say they are of God but are not of God is going to come out and they are going to preach a false doctrine and it's going to capture the ears of the people. So many people now are are talking a, a good talk but there's a way you know who's talking who's talking real and who's not talking real. See, when you have the, the Holy Spirit in you, when you have Christ in you, when you have the cross in you, when you have God's words flowing through your veins, when you have the living water in you, There's nothing that can take you away from God. Nothing. And when people come to talk to you about Christ and and the Father, and, and they're not talking in the right manner that's pertaining to this book, you'll get that feeling. You'll get that that something's not right. What what is they talking about? It'll be like how you will sit there and you in a crowd of people and all of a sudden you like, you get that fight or flight kind of feeling. Am I going to have to fight my way out of this or do I, I need to leave? I need to go. You'll get that kind of feeling. Because something just ain't right. That's how it is when you hear other people that's not preaching the true gospel. Because they're not speaking his truth. They're speaking things they done grew up with. They done heard. That they done been taught. That, that they done learned over years and years and it has been instilled in their minds. They, they talking stuff that, that they didn't put together. They, they took his gospel and watered it down and took out words and put in their own words and, and, and made it where it's cushiony and soft and gentle so it, it won't hurt them. So it, 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 it'll be easy for them to digest. Because see, I'm going to tell y'all like this. See, his truth, his truth, if you're living in sin, oh, his truth is not it's not going to be easy for you to swallow. It's not going to be easy for you to digest. It's going to be sweet and tasty on the tongue. But as soon as it hits your stomach, it's going to tear you apart. It's 
It's called conviction. That's when the Holy Spirit has taken hold of you. And now it's got you thinking. It's got you wondering. It it didn't captivated you. It didn't held you captive. Now it's it's, it's, it's asking you, now, what you going to do about this? What you going to do about this? It's going to have you thinking about that, that relationship that you in that you know you should not be in. It's going to have you thinking about that, 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 that drinking that you're doing and, and what you're going to do about it. It's going to have you thinking about that, 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 that man that's living with you that you're not married to or that woman that you're living with that you're not married to or, or what, why is your child acting like this and you're not doing nothing? It's going to have you thinking about all the things in your life. It, it's going to have you cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, sweetheart. That's what it's going to do. It's going to convict you. Holy Spirit, once the Holy Spirit grab hold to you, baby, that's it. That's it. That's how. That's when you know they're speaking the truth. Because the word is like a what? A two-edged sword. It is so sharp that it will cut through the bone straight to the marrow it ain't no way you can run hide from it once it gets you it got you but see we got these the 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 false ones out there that's preaching these so it won't it won't it won't pierce the skin so it won't hurt you so you can be comfortable and relaxed no 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 <laughs> no no it don't work like that it don't work like that I'm sorry I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Jesus was not a, no, no, he was not. No, he was loud. He made sure he stood far off so everybody could hear him. He said that so your skin could be soft and cushioned. No, baby, he was trying to get at your gut. He was trying to cut you. And he wasn't trying to cut you with a sword and, and with, with knives and, and stuff like that. No, he was cutting you with the word, baby. He he he, he was speaking truth. He was speaking truth. That's the kind of pastors, evangelists, ministers, teachers, prophets, and prophetess he needs today. He needs those that's going to stand up and don't care who looking, who hearing. He don't care. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. If the if the minister come. The minister counselor don't want to get up there and you up there telling your sermon and they sit up there looking at you like you have crazy. Let them look at you like you crazy. Long as you speak in what God told you to speak, that's what you do. Who cares what the others think? If they don't put you on their pulpit another day, that's fine with you. Long as you got up there and did what God had you to do. That's what's so wrong with so many today. We fear what other pastors and ministers and congregations got to say about what we do. We don't answer to them. We a new generation of preachers. We a new generation of ministers. Come on, y'all. He's coming back. He's coming home and he's looking for 
preachers like him. He looking for preachers and ministers. He looking for shepherds and anointed ones that are like him. Like him. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. Not man. Not the world. Me. He wasn't afraid of the world. He wasn't afraid of the man. He wasn't afraid of other religious leaders. If he wasn't afraid of Satan. Come on, y'all. It's hot. It is hot. It's, 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 no. Y'all know what y'all got to do. Y'all know what y'all got to do. I don't know what y'all waiting on. Because your invitation already been handed out to you. Oh, Jesus. I ain't got nothing. Now tap a hair on my head and it's hot. Verse 8. It says again. The devil took him up. Into the exceeding high mountains. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And the glory. Of them. <laughs> Let me read that again. And again. The devil took him up into the exceeding high mountains and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Commentary. And again, the third temptation. This is the third temptation. The devil took him up unto the exceeding high mountain, not definitely known, but probably Nebo, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Showed them to him, not in a physical sense, but rather in spiritual sense. Verse 9. And said unto him, all these things will I give you. If you will fall down and worship me. He told Jesus, I will give you all of this. All you got to do is just worship me and deny the Father. Worship me and kick the old man to the curb. Worship me. That's all you got to do. Just, hey, give me the old, you know, give me everything you're giving him and we'll, I'll give you all of this. The commentary. The temptation was that Christ abrogate the cross 
through which he would regain all things. If Christ would have given Satan what he wanted, he'd have never made it to the cross. We'd have never been redeemed. Satan would have still had the keys to hell. And who knows where we will be at right now. Who knows what this world will be like as we speak. Who knows if I would have been here right now. Doing what I'm doing. But we know. God already knew what was going to happen. He knew what the outcome was going to be. And I am so thankful. That my Jesus. Was a dependent man. A faithful man. An obedient man. Because he was God. Yeah. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee... <laughs> Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Boom. Drop the mic. Plain and simple. What he told him? Get thee hence, Satan. Presents Christ for the first time, personally addressing Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Satan desires the mankind worship and serve him. We are to worship and serve the Lord alone. Jesus told Satan. <laughs> no. It is written. That you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone. This is what Satan longed for. To be worshipped by mankind. But that will never, ever, ever happen. He may think he got people right now. But he don't truly have it. Because every day. People are giving their lives to Christ. Every day that the saints are out there fighting. For the souls of the lost. He's losing them. And the more that the saints fight. The more come back to Christ. And the more come back to Christ. The more get out there and fight. We will. Build God's kingdom here on earth. We will bring back his children. We will fight for the souls of his kids. Our brothers and sisters. He said that hell and the fire, the lake of fire and brimstone was not made for his children. It was made for Satan and the falling angels.
Verse 11. Then the devil left him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Commentary. Then the devil left him, departed from him for a season, meaning that there would be another temptation. Luke 4.13 And behold, another angel... Behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And what manner they minister, we aren't told. We are tempted, like I say, every day that we walk God's earth. All of us, believers and non-believers. But it's up to us to deny and reject those temptations. And yes, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard. But with the power of prayer and meditation and study and worship, we can overcome with our faith in Christ and our love for his words. We can do all things through him. Our, like I say, y'all, our victory is already won. Already. We just have to trust and believe in him. Trust and believe in him. Now, I'm about to go back to the study guide. It says... The earth is presently in a fallen state. The world in which we live is in a fallen state. When God created the world, it was created perfectly. After each act of creation, he saw it and said, it is good. Before the fall of the earth functioned perfectly. It was abundantly fruitful. After the fall, the earth was cursed. Genesis 3, 17 and 18 says, And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the fruit, I mean, eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the land. I'm sorry, of the field. Romans 8, 20 and 22 says, For the creatures was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope, because the creatures itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and traveleth in pain together until now. So when 
when we when we see all of this being made new when sin is finally gone when the curse has finally been lifted when when, when Christ has finally came home and the deed is his where there's a new heaven and a new earth and we are living peacefully forever the animals will be lifted also, they were cursed just like we were. Yo, Adam is the one who named the animals. The animals was living in peace before we were cursed just like Adam and Eve were. But when they cursed the land, they cursed the animals. So we all are suffering. The animals are suffering. But the only thing is, the animals still give praise and worship. They still get when the bird sings in the morning. It's like they're praising and worship because. They're singing their songs. They, animals, if you ever actually just sit and watch nature, they, they they do things totally different from us. Totally different. Totally different. You'll be amazed at how God's creatures adore him more than we do. Mankind in a fallen and depraved state. Man is in a fallen and depraved condition spiritually and physically. As the earth and world was originally created perfect, so was man. Before the fall, man never got sick. He had dominion over the earth. And he would have never died. Do y'all understand that? If Adam and Eve had not did what they did, we will be walking around now with Adam and Eve. We will be walking around with Noah, Moses, even David. We will be seeing the saints of the Old and New Testament right now. If Adam and Eve had not did what they did. We will be living in a perfect world where no one died. No one got sick. There was no famine, no pestilence, no nothing. That's the kind of world we would have been in. But thanks to our first parents. They took that away from us. They took that away from us.
after he sinned, he was made subjection to sickness, death, and depravity, but hope was made possible at the cross. Jesus gave us hope. He gave He took all our sins and transgressions He took everything. And put it on his shoulders. He took the he literally took the world and put it on his shoulders and died for it. So that we could have hope in living again. To live in the dream of going back to where we, it won't be exactly like it was. I don't know if it's true because, you know, I never lived in the Garden of Eden, but some say that the Garden of Eden was located in Iraq on the geographical map. I don't know because I'm not a a map person. I... I One day when I get to travel, I'll find out. But that's where they say the garden, the original Garden of Eden was located, was in Iraq. And Iraq is one of the main people who's, who oppressed the Israelite people. But that's where the first man and the first woman resided I am so grateful to my Lord and Savior for blessing me with the chance to be able to live in the garden or not the garden but to live on a in a new garden of Eden to see a new heaven Because if it wasn't for what he did, we'd have still been cursed. We wouldn't have that chance to have eternal life. If he would have given in and give Satan what he wanted, None of us would have made it. And this earth would have been Satan's forever. And that wouldn't have been good.
Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Romans 5, 12 says, Wherefore as by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Romans 8, 23 through 25 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit the redemption of our body, for we are saved by hope. By hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? If we hope for the things that we do not see, do we have patience to wait for it? If we hope, if we see a new pair of shoes, and we hope to get those shoes, because we see them, we patiently wait and save up our money to get it. And when we get the money together, then we get them and we keep hoping that they, you know, still be there for us to get them. But when we know that Jesus died on the cross for us so that we can have salvation and everlasting life. The hopes of having a new body, a home with Jesus for eternity, a peace. Salvation. A place where there's no sickness, no death. Only worship. A hope for a new beginning. The only thing is we can't see it because it hasn't come to pass. It's in the spirit realm while we're still here in the earthly realm. Do we not have the patience to wait for that? I have patience. And I will wait on him. Because I know he's coming. And he said he would come. And he said he would do this. And he said he would have this. So I'm willing to wait. And sometimes... I don't have patience because sometimes the world gets me down. It bums me out. The people gets to me and I don't understand how they can call themselves one thing and act like another. I can't understand how they say they're this and they do another because It's easy for people to say a lot of things. And I just be wishing for him to just come on and get me and 
Let me come home. Sometimes I wish I could just go home because I'm just tired of being down here. But he always reminds me to just stay focused. That he has a purpose and a plan for my life down here. And if I stay focused on that and keep doing what he asked me to do down here, keep talking to everyone, keep ministering and, and, and keep just keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep pressing forward. Keep being a, a blessing in people's lives and helping and, and doing what I can. That before I know it, the time will come and I will get to get home. And that is what keeps me going. Because he talks to me. He calms me. He lets me know that he's there. And that is what gives me my patience. He knows my heart. Like I say, he knows all our hearts. He knows our fears. He knows everything. So the question is, do you have patience to wait on the return of our King? Do you have the patience to keep doing what he asks of you in spite of everything that's going on in this world? My answer is yes. Yes, I do. The lion and the lamb is worthy. Revelations 5, 5 and 6 says, And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, weep not, cry no more. <laughs> Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. The kinsman redeemer is a male relative who, according to various laws of the Pentateuch, had a privilege or responsibility to act on behalf of a relative who was in trouble, danger, or need. The Hebrew term goel or kinsman redeemer designates one who delivers or rescues. Genesis 48.16, Exodus 6.6 6, or redeems property or person. Leviticus 27, 9 through 25, 25, 47 through 55. The kinsman who redeems or vindicates a relative is illustrated, illustrated most clearly in the book of Ruth, where the kinsman redeemer is Boaz. 
The story of Ruth and Boaz begins with Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, returned to Bethlehem from Moab, where they had been living. Naomi's husband and both sons, one, the husband of Ruth, had died, leaving the women penniless and without a male protector. Upon arriving in Bethlehem, Naomi sends Ruth to glean in the fields of Boaz, a wealthy relative of Naomi, to whom they though a series of divinely appointed circumstances appeal as their goel. Boaz acquaints willingly takes Ruth as his wife and together they bear a son named Obed, who became the grandfather of David, the forefather of Jesus. Yahweh is Israel's Redeemer, the one who promises to defend the vindicate and vindicate them. He is both Father and Deliverer. Exodus 22. There are numerous Old Testament appeals to God as rescuer of the weak and needy. Psalms 82.4, Daniel 6.27, Jeremiah 20.13. And preserver of the sheep of Israel, Ezekiel 34, 10 through 12 and 22. In the New Testament, Christ is often regarded as an example of a kinsman redeemer. Because as our brother, Hebrew 12, I mean 2, 11. He also redeems us because of our great need. One that only he can satisfy in Ruth 3, 9. We see a beautiful and potent picture of the needy supplicant. I mean, supplic supplicant, unable to rescue herself. Requesting of the kinsman redeemer that he cover her with his protection. Redeemed her and make her his wife. In the same way the Lord Jesus Christ bought us for himself. Out of the course. Out of the course. Out of our destitution, made us his own beloved bride and blessed us for all generations. He is the true kinsman redeemer of all who call on him in faith. The kinsman redeemer had to be a relative and able to pay the price of redemption. Jesus became our relative through his incarnation and was able to pay the price of our redemption because he was both God. Listen to that again. Jesus became our relative through his incarnation and was able to pay the price of our redemption because he was both, both God and man. John 1 and 14. And because he was sinless. He is our deliverer. He saw our need and came down from the portals of heaven to earth to pay the price of redemption for sin and set us free for our helpless state. He alone was able. His de this depicts his sacrifice on the cross as payment for our sins. Therefore, he is worthy. It pictures Christ as being slain from the foundation of the world and the awfulness of sin. God. 
God came down from the heavens. Wrapped himself in flesh. Walked amongst us. And purchased us, all of us, all of us, with his blood. The only way that he could do that was through his incarnation. He became flesh. They nailed him on the cross, pierced him on his side. They put a crown of thorn on his head for us. We are his bride, and he is our bridegroom. We are his people, and he is our God. He did this for us. And he did not have to. Man caused this world to fall and be cursed. And God became man. To save this world and to uncurse it. Because we was too stubborn. To do it his way. Okay. We're going to stop here. And we'll start off with the verses tomorrow. And then we'll be finished with the study guide. Yep, we'll finish up the last three pages tomorrow. So, I will put in the reference guides, the reference verses for tonight. I hope that you guys got something out of this because I, I truly did. I truly did. This is why I love this man. This is why I love this man. But we're going to go ahead and pray. And I'm going to let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your afternoon or your evening. Um, I'm going to go and make children bags for tomorrow. <laughs> I have a lot of boxes of stuff, goodies and stuff that I need to put together. So, guys, study. I, I advise y'all to... I, I will keep saying this until we get to the end of the book of Revelations. That's, that's all I can say. I would just keep saying this over and over again until... I, until just until... 
ask him to give you wisdom and understanding before you start. Pray and ask him. Talk to him. Tell him you want to know more and understand revelations. You want to go into the mind of John. You and if you're not, if you don't think that you can handle what he's going to show you, then ask him just to take it easy and give you, you know, bit by bit and part and you know, just show you. But tell don't tell him to show you the truth though. Because he's going to show it to you. Now, if you can't handle the truth and, and, and you can't deal with what he show you, then. But, yeah. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I, I come to you in prayer and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining us, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for coming and teaching the class today. Thank you for just doing what you do best, and that's being honest honest, and truthful. Thank you for... Thank you for everything. Just thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being who you are. For taking over the cameras, the microphones, and just every time someone get ready to touch that button, Holy Spirit, I ask that you just activate them. Activate their minds, their hearts, their souls, their spirits. Open up their eyes and their ears to hear. I just thank you. Father, thank you for using me. It is an honor and a privilege to serve you and to serve your son, Jesus Christ, and to serve your children. I ask that you just continue to watch over me and my family, my children, my grandchildren, my daughter-in-law. I ask that you watch over Kendra and Kayla and the two sisters that stay below us. Father, I ask that you be with my brothers and sisters as they lay their heads down tonight to rest. I ask that you watch over their families and their homes and protect each and every one of us from the seen and the unseen. Father, I just thank you for blessing each and every one of us with our daily portion. I ask that you be with my brothers and sisters who live in faraway lands and countries who are being persecuted and executed by their government, their family, their loved ones, their friends. And just be with them, Father. Protect them. Uh, just love on them. Encourage them. Father, That they're, they're being heard by you. Their, their calls, their cries are being answered by you. Because people don't understand the love that we have for you. That we're willing to give our lives for you. So thank you. Thank you for blessing us, for keeping us safe. And, and we just love you. Father, we pray. We pray to you that this was pleasing and acceptable in your eyesight to build your kingdom, to glorify your name. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, guys, thank y'all for joining me again tonight. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. I will see y'all Sunday. And remember, again, if you are interested in your child going to summer camp, Go to your nearest Salvation Army and talk to them about the summer camp programs. Um, Y'all, it's, it's something wonderful for the kids to go to, to get away from the summer. And, and you know, the parents can have their time off. Um,
We have all kinds of activities for the kids. Um, I work at the summer camp in East Troy, Milwaukee, and I love it. I love working with the kids. I, it's, it's so remarkable, and it's so enjoyable, and I get a lot out of it. These kids make a lasting impact. So, check it out. And remember that God loves you. He always has. He always will. Remember, no matter what you go through, no matter what trials and tribulations that you go through, know that God loves you. And all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. He will reach out his hand and he will pull you guys out of that pit that you threw yourself into. Know that Miss Terry loves each and every one of you guys to the moon and back. I will see you guys Sunday. Y'all have a good night. Mwah.